Dark Stanny, and you were inside court for this extraordinary marathon of lies caught on tape. Describe the mood as we see this interrogation tape. What's the reaction? Tell us. It, we were all hanging on the edge of our seats watching this, Jane, because we see July 15th is the first day. She gets taken into the interrogation room. She is lying. She's saying, I have never been there. I have nothing to do with this. I never went to Arizona. I was never at Travis's house. And then we cut to day two. The next day, she comes back. She's wearing orange jumpsuit, an orange jumpsuit. Because remember, day one, she's saying she wasn't there. She gets arrested. She gets put in jail. Day two, she's back in the interrogation room. And what does she say? Oh, yeah, actually, I was there. I got there at 3 a.m. in the morning, so his roommates wouldn't see me. He didn't like other people to see me when I came to his house. And we see this girl change her story, lie after lie after lie. And then at one point, the investigator leaves the interrogation room, and you're just sitting there. And there is a good minute or two where the entire courtroom is just watching her sit in a room all by herself. So you're thinking, what is she going to do? She doesn't think anyone's watching her. She's just sitting there stretching, doing yoga poses in the, in the middle of an office, in the sheriff's office. So as if that was the most compelling moment was when she was alone in that interrogation room because the entire courtroom, including the jury, was looking to see what is this girl going to do next. I saw the jurors. They were all taking notes. Like as she was giving her lies and she was changing her story, they were taking notes. One juror had filled his notebook completely. He went to a second notebook. He started writing. So the jurors are very, very into this. They're watching all this video. And Celine, I'm watching this stretch. And I'm like, I have never seen anything like this before in all my years of covering cases that somebody is left in a room by interrogators after being grilled and she does this. It's just truly bizarre. It's extraordinary. If you put it in a movie, people would say, oh, that's absurd. Write it out. N nobody would ever do such a thing. Uh, really extraordinary. Here's now, as Celine mentioned, Day one, she's being grilled. No, I wasn't there. Day two, they arrest her. She's in jailhouse orange. And she offers her second version of events as she's being grilled. Uh, another elaborate lie where she claims Travis was killed by two ninja intruders, all dressed in black, in masks, a man and a woman. Check this out. I ran. And he stopped me. When he stopped you? And Travis, he was a, um, he was still, like, conscious and still alive. And, um, but you just left him there? No, I, I ran into the closet, because, like, there's two doors, and they were sort of in the hallway already. And he stopped me, and he didn't touch me. He was just held the gun to my head, and he was like, you don't go anywhere. And he told, he told the other girl to finish it. I, now, by her own admission today, that is a complete and utter fabrication. There were no ninjas. Let's bring in uh, the attorneys and John Lieberman, investigative reporter and host searching for justice on AOL. Uh, I want to start with you, John. This is one of the most extraordinary cases I've ever seen come down the pike, not just the overwhelming forensics, but these, this marathon of lies is the best way I can describe it. And the jury watching this it almost seems like it was uh, a crime to take this to trial, that something should have been done because it is the most open and shut case we have ever seen. Well, it is. In my mind, it is. I mean, the lies are infuriating. The tears are infuriating. Luckily, this detective played it so right. And when he said that he was the one speaking for Travis, that is just so right. And he unraveled Jody. He allowed Jody actually to unravel herself. Jody said things today like, I've had plenty of boyfriends and they're all still alive. I mean, who says that? She says at one point to the detective, tell me how I'm acting guilty. She makes it up as she goes along, and it's absolutely infuriating. And then the Verizon phone tech was on the stand today, and he testified essentially that it appears that after Jody killed Travis, she hacked into his voicemail to check his voicemail.